Well, let me let me tell you guys about um one of my favorite mini golf related things. Is uh, it necking in the windmill? No, it's the fact that uh Chris Barnes, who is a Hall of yeah. Fame bowler. He's one of the best bowlers to ever do it. Yeah. Is also a world class putt putt golfer. That fucking rocks. If he, and, and I recommend to everyone there is a clip of him competing in a putt putt championship, and the commentators are talking about how great this course is. One of them unironically compares it to the Masters course in Augusta. It's wonderful. <laughs> Does he go to the moon? Uh, no. But, but does putt? it compare to castles oh. and coasters? Oh, oh wow! Does Putt Putt go to the moon? I mean, Putt Putt goes to the moon. Chris Barnes doesn't, though. I, no, well, I think, I, I, I think, Alan Shepard just hit a drive on the moon. He golfed on the moon. Yeah, you didn't know that. Oh AJ? no, I Alan Shepard. Yeah, I don't know who Alan Shepard. It was is. one. That was one small step for man in its own unique way. I thought. Yeah, I thought you would yeah. just fuse the protagonist of Alan Wake and uh, Jack Shepard. You n- you'd never heard of Alan Shepard? No. Alan B. Shepard. <laughs> Alan the, B. Shepard. Yeah, he was the first American to go into space. Huh. Cool. I thought. I thought. I guess I. I. I don't track the space race because I couldn't give a shit. Um, to be truthful, I don't care about you space. obviously you don't care were about not our raised by a trekkie yeah um, truly or i mean I, because what's up there is just death and nothingness so like it's actually not a bad way to think about it really when people talk about like what space is going to do for us in the future it's like no it's not no it's it's it's, it's, it's a it's death so tank. hard to like be alive out there and you, and you know who agrees with who agrees with us on that is anyone who's ever been to fucking space <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what if the moon were to fall i don't know what if <laughs> what if inside the moon yeah. were mm-hmm. a sentient race of aliens okay. that we are descended from go on that were Wait, containing is, is that also part of moonfall yeah oh. that that contained all of the evil uh of the world and had to encase it inside of the moon to keep us safe i mean that would be good i guess so Welcome to the worst of all possible worlds, the first and only incidents of all the world's evil being encased into one single podcast. I am the worst of all possible Brian's. I'm the worst of all possible AJ's. And I am the worst of all possible Josh's, and we're joining you here again for yet another fucking installment of Wit's Endless Summer, the sub-series of the worst of all possible worlds, in which we listen to, recap, and review episodes of Adventures in Odyssey. And this is very exciting because we are nearing the end of Spring's Awitkening. Yeah, what's up next? And are entering once again into Wit's Endless Summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. We've been doing this for like We're almost a sequel, year. We're in the sequel, baby. Wits, We're in the sequel. More, more like Wit's Glorious Summer by this son of York. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I cannot believe we've fucking been doing this shit for like almost a whole year. Almost already. a year. Unreal. Yeah. Oh, this is all my fault. But, uh, we are we are gonna reminisce about that more when we get to our anniversary we episode coming are. up very, very soon. But for now, we are unfortunately trapped in the hell <laughs> of middle school journalism. And again, in case this is your first time listening, uh welcome. Uh <laughs> hope you like Moonfall. To all who come to this happy place. <laughs> Ad- Welcome. Adventures in Odyssey is a children's radio drama produced by Focus on the Family, uh, an evangelical Christian organization that is actually pretty uh, influential. Pretty, it has been pretty cool, actually. It's pretty good. It's, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's good and cool, and it's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's really done a wonder on all of my friends, and now me, unfortunately. <laughs> Would you say that, like? Over the course of the past year, that your focus on the family has increased? It has. It really has. I have, uh, every time I see a family on the street, I just (laughs) yell, run at them. (laughs) And they do. But not before you snap into focus on them. Like your eyes just like, and then immediately you're dialing to that family. It's the thing in Jaws. It's the shot in Jaws that zooms in on the, I've never seen Jaws. My focus on the family in the last year has gone from a simple meniscus lens from a Kodak brownie oh to a nice high quality Carl Zeiss hooked onto a Hasselblad. What I love about this podcast is that slowly but surely all of like our deepest nichest interests are coming like to the foray. And Brian's is photography. Yes, and specifically just in the last year, 
because I needed something to do besides gardening. I mean, I I have spared you guys by not talking too much about immersive sims, uh, you know, during our have time you? together. Wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> when, Josh? When? <laughs> when has there ever been a hey, case? AJ, uh, yeah, let me just compare something to you. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. le- photography is nice, but is it as nice as Thief or Thief Two? <laughs> <laughs> look, look. All I'm saying is that gardening is fine, but is it Deus Ex? <laughs> The answer is no, because nothing's as good as Deus Ex. There you go! Except for maybe Thief. So, or Thief 2. <laughs> you will never know my interests. So, uh, this time around we listened to three remarkable episodes of Adventures in Odyssey, all of which have the commonality that they are, uh, well, they're about our, our, our favorite friend, Lucy Cunningham Schultz, the intrepid cub reporter at the Odyssey Owl. Fucking narc. She's an owl cub. And uh, <laughs> if, you might recall from if you've listened to some previous episodes that Lucy is, uh, I would say she's impressionable. She's headstrong. How would we describe Lucy Cunningham Schultz? Um, smackable. Wow. You really are getting into this whole focus on the family. thing. <laughs> uh, I, here's the big problem with Adventures in Odyssey. Um, the way that I currently uh, endure this show is that these episodes are pretty far apart from each other, actually, uh, in terms of, like, episode order. Right, um, yeah. They're about 50 this, episodes this is apart. The, this is the coverage of about a year, a yeah, full year. A full year. So, um, usually there's, I think, episodes to sort of break up. If Like, if you don't particularly like a character like Lucy... Yeah, mm-hmm. you're not going to see them for another 10 her, episodes. Yeah, yeah, a goody two-shoes know-it-all. Yeah, so, so previously, of course, defender. we knew Lucy from being like, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can write about evolution. Right, yeah. Where she had to write that evolution was real or else forfeit her grade because it was a competition for yeah. something? Uh, yeah, an essay. An there's, essay contest? There's so many competitions. Is this what happens in the Midwest? It's like everybody's doing forensics since elementary well, school. Well, this is what school choice wants. Yes. This is, this is yes. Betsy DeVos's plan for the future of American right, right. education. It's, it's building all around the meritocracy. Yeah. Everything has to be about the the individual. Performance I mean, unironically, yes. yeah, yeah. She 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 so often is like, I have to use my God given talents in order to like write the best journalism that I can, and I won't write anything that I don't believe in. And then she's so impressionable that it's just like she believes in something, and everyone's like, "Don't do that." And she's like, "Okay, yep, right, <laughs> right." The 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 resolution of the evolution episode was her just telling the teacher. This doesn't jibe with my beliefs. And he's like, oh, well, I, I wouldn't have told you to do that if I had known that. Yeah, the stakes, the stakes for, <laughs> Lucy, <laughs> for Lucy, the stakes are always for her very high because, you know, she's a middle schooler and this makes yeah. sense. But the show also presents those things as being very high stakes. It doesn't really lampshade. Right, her no, it's not all. just because she is a child. Right. It's she is she is representing like the values that focus on the family wants to imbue in the children. Right. Yeah. And, and when yeah. I say that she's smackable, what I mean is that it's not her or even the fact that she's a child. It's the fact that she is the mouthpiece for focus on the family's right. values. And that's that I want to like reach through her and grab Paul McCusker's face and then slam it repeatedly into a table. How did you know Paul McCusker wrote all of these episodes? <laughs> all three of them. Got his I weird, listened to Chris at the end. <laughs> they've got his weird soon-to-be Catholic fingerprints all over them. Yep. Yeah. Um, soon to be Anglican and then Anglican. later Catholic. Wait, yeah. he was Anglican and he was evangelical and then Anglican and then Yeah, Catholic? he was Anglican for a long time. Mama he was Anglican man. for, re- like, the Catholic thing is still, rel- like, within the last 10 years. The first episode that we're going to be recapping here is called Muckraker. Ooh, Josh, did you just say a swear? What's it like working on Adventures in Odyssey? Oh, it's great. I mean, we have a lot of fun, and I really That's love this That's all sh- just uh, fun? Uh, well, no, it's hard work, too. Oh, see, really? really? I- uh, what makes it so hard? Oh, well, making sure we get everything right. And uh, so I- you're saying there are times when you get things this wrong? Well, no, 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 not exactly. But you just said that you have to work hard to get things right, didn't you? Well, yeah, but... So if you have to work hard <laughs> to get things right, then it follows that most of the time you do things wrong, right? Well, no, I mean, I wouldn't put it that way. Well, then how would you put it? Well, I just think that sometimes I look at things differently than our engineers. Oh, you mean they're difficult to work with. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Then you're difficult to work with. Well, well no. Come on, now, Chris. Like if you see things <laughs> one way and they see things another way, well, that means that one of you is difficult really to work with. Which is like Wait a yeah. minute. 
This is supposed to be an interview, not an inquisition. And then she calls this guy a muckraker, and he's like, oh, you have a foul mouth. And yes, it's the return of the Chris skit. Uh, we thought it was over. <laughs> this this is like, wasn't the last over. Chris skit before this, because this is episode number what? Like one... I didn't write it down, but this is 1991. Like the the other stuff was happening in like 87. Yeah, this is yeah. right. They just they they, they 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 were like, what does this need? What does this really need? That's gonna put it over the top. I know. Let's bring back those things that people love so much. Chris getting up to wacky hijinks for the first three minutes of a 21 minute audio. Drive. Hey, folks, she loves leaves. She loves leaves. The whole time I was just like, she Chris has escaped her containment pen. We have to get her back in. Um, <laughs> Uh, it is this interviewer that is interviewing Chris um, has sexually harassed every woman he's ever spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be darned if he stops now. Um, it, it This is interminable. Uh, it, it always feels like I wonder if they write the episodes and they realize, oh, we're short. Oh, fuck. We're, we're short mm. a couple minutes. Like, do we want to, like, add in a little thing here to, like, pad out, mm. stretch out the time? Uh, or do they just not have, an, of like, a, a natural way to uh, work in Muckraker? No, I think this I think this was 100% by design from the beginning. I think they, they, wanted they really to, wanted to do this. this. Built on they this. Wanted this to, is the... Yeah, because I think this one, like, they seed what, like, the term Muckraker. Mm. Like, if, if this was added later, it was done pretty expertly, I have to apologize to say but uh, but then we get to With this part, heavy so, heart that so, i regret so yes. Tom reaches through lucy and grabs so her lucy face and gives at it a her smooch. middle school newspaper the odyssey owl is told by her teacher you need to do an expose you need to do an investigative piece about something that's fucked up involving right. a, pr- a product a bad product yeah you just have to find one and lucy's like Bleh, i don't know but she finds a topic Calvin Bloom Company in Connellsville? Calvin Bloom Company. Oh, they make uh, face cream and hair products, uh, shampoo and the like. It says the government was after them for using green dye number 94 in their AccuGel. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, AccuGel is a shampoo. I guess I was, uh, I'm, I, I did miss this. Uh, is the editor of the newspaper the same in the first two episodes? First episode, no. The second two episodes, yeah. Just, yes. just, okay. just to clarify yeah, this. Was this. A, a female teacher, yeah. Yes. And, and also the... um editor who she is talking to here is dale jacobs who is the editor of the odyssey right, in Times. this clip right. yeah that she's gone yes, she has yes. gone to talk to dale jacobs to get consumer reports basically yep. calls about bad consumer products what i like about dale jacobs vocal performance is that he always sounds just exhausted <laughs> yeah i don't know if you guys have heard the new like uh omni announcement that's being made in the subways where they're like the new omni payment system or whatever it's this guy it's like <laughs> oh it's, wow it's the same vo- it's not literally this guy this is a focus on the family executive but it's the same it voice it every time. It's yeah. like, why is Dale Jacobs telling me about the fucking new payment system? Got to um, focus on the subway. Um, but, <clears throat> but yeah, so basically Lucy, as one does when they need to do anything, goes to Wit. And, and Wit tells her, because I guess he just knows. He just, I don't know how he well, always knows Apparently this, stuff, this but, was in the news. This was like a big news story right. was that this Connellsville based company is like a national brand. Right. Calvin Bloom. Right. And their green dye in the shampoo is causing all kinds of like horrible chemical burns and, and rashes so and everything. And so the FDA yeah. actually recalled. Yes. There was a new law put in place like two, like recently, two months ago to, yeah. to take all of this shampoo and shit off the shelves. Right. Well, it's amazing to me that like, I mean, they expect I feel bad for Lucy in this episode because they expect so much from her. She already solved racism. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. a few episodes ago. Uh, and now they're making her take down a multinational company. She's she's in middle school. Like, no Are, one ever brings this up. Have newspapers. Is that a thing? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. But I mean, not very good ones. But so, I mean, I, I, I did not go to a school that had any kind of paper, you know, K through 12. But sure. like. The I, I had no idea that there were middle school newspapers. Yeah, like a journalism club. Yeah, we have like mine didn't. Uh, okay, so maybe not Christian schools because they're obviously very wary of journalists. Right. Uh, yeah, it's very, very yeah, true. No, Public like schools. We didn't have it. Gallup dullest. Mid didn't have it. Also, is that, I, this is an axe I have to grind. Growing up, I always said mid school. Oh, right? what? Mid being what? short from. <laughs> fuck <laughs> both of you right now, because that's where this is going. So the when I get to so school that's, is mid. So it was, <laughs> you know, it was Gallup mid. You know, you had mid school, you had junior high, you had high school. That's just what you said. I said it, you know, 
I was in Grand Rapids. I was in like my second week of college and I say something about, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that happened to me back in mid school. And someone said, mid school. (laughs) What did you just say? What? 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 How? Who could possibly fucking say something like that? Mid school? What are those words? Yeah. How fucking dare you? Go to hell, you piece of shit. Hey, hey, Brian. Like, what the fuck is what? It, what is your problem in the Midwest? What is going on with you people? I mean, that I, hearing a, a very simple abbreviation causes you to have fucking heart palpitations. Well, I think the problem is that at the end of the day, you are saying that the school is mid. That was not a one. That was not something people said back then. Brian, Brian, have have you considered that perhaps you sounded like a dingus? No. Wow. (laughs) Shots fired. No. And you are being classist and regionalist as a coastal. I was two states over. That's actually a really good point. Well, you were making fun of me, so clearly there's a problem here. No, no, it's your fault. There is something. There is something inherently wrong with people from Southern California because coastal values. We don't like abbreviations in any form. Like. Uh, you know, there, there. That's much more of a Northern California. You made the track. word hell longer. No, we did not. Northern yes, California did, yes, did that. Did. No, we you, don't you say. Did we you don't did. say hella in Southern the whole California. State is the same thing. It is. Oh, I don't boy. care. I don't Bakersfield care. Bakersfield called it once. It's dead dreams. Yeah, I, back. I don't care if you're some <laughs> Oki in fucking Oildale or a Mennonite in Reedley or whatever you are in Sacramento. Jerking it. <laughs> you're the same thing. You're all it's the jerking. same. Yeah. All, right. all of you spending your weekends at Disneyland in Hearst Castle. Hey, I mean, to be fair, I did spend a lot of weekends at Disneyland. That, see, that's, that's what I'm that's saying. When you're right, you're right, Brian. Hearst Castle. Connie actually overhears Lucy talking to Wit. Accu-Gel? I used to use that shampoo until, until it gave me a rash. Is it in the newspaper? These are old articles. Oh, because I had to go to the doctor and everything. In fact, I wasn't the only one. There was another woman there with the same problem. Oh. When was Whoa. this? I don't remember you going to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, it when were you deal. going to the doctor? You're having week. health problems? Last what week? are they uh-huh. exactly? I mean, okay. Where is the rash? Describe the rash it for me slowly. Away. Wait a minute, Connie. You say you used Accugel last week and got a rash? Yeah. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? Don't tell me it's like radioactive or something. No, it's no, just it that gives the you a rash. Yeah, you were supposed to stop using that green dye number 94 two months ago. Is you're saying you had a problem with it last week? Uh-huh. Did they make Connie dumber? Yes. I yeah, she's like, getting dumber, yeah. Like, like, And you can really hear it over the course of these three episodes, just how she's getting more and more brain dead. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, really she, sad. She actually. loses she loses any sense of like reflexive skepticism and just becomes incredibly credulous of everything. Yeah. So yeah. Connie got a rash last week, right? This shampoo was supposed to have been recalled and then reformulated three months ago. And last week, Connie got a rash from her shampoo. This whole storyline, um, thrilling for kids. Yeah. I think this is like, I am I would be on the edge of my oh, seat. Oh, white knuckles I, for sure, dude. Okay, here's the thing. I remember this episode so vividly. Really? Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. Is it just because of rashes? <laughs> 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 because of you your known, big thing for rashes. because of your known obsession with rashes, Brian. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's a big fan of Community, but only for one actor. <laughs> the only rash I'm Jim interested rash. in is uh, noted I'm professional bowler and future fa- Hall of Famer Sean Rash. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um. Uh, so what's what's actually actually really sad here is that uh, Lucy had the opportunity to go after the real story here, which was a soda machine in her cafeteria mm, that, that was, yeah. that was wrong giving change. wrong change, and that soda machine. CIA asset. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. she could have oh. really discovered that. That was wits. That was wits. Really I, 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 AJ, because because you've conditioned me, I thought you were going to say that soda machine was Ray Liotta. Oh uh, no, 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 no! He comes later. He's in. He's in the third episode. <laughs> so Lucy goes to the doctor. She goes to her doctor. Yeah, Doctor Bloomberg. She goes to Mayor Michael <laughs> Bloomberg. She gets stopped and frisked. Doctor, and she actually does. This doctor does <laughs> she, not she sure like does. 7-Eleven. He also immediately proceeds to violate HIPAA by talking about the health conditions of. Multiple well, no, he, didn't he, violate it first. he didn't he didn't tell her name. He okay, said that's true. he would that's call true. the patient that's and the true. patient I think that was perfectly in line okay. with what a doctor should do. Okay. He yeah. said, Yes, yeah, someone else came in with the rash because Lucy already knew that. Sure. Um and he said, Well, well but I he can't, did talk about I, Connie's condition. That was a violation. I, that that's true. Like he yeah. he needed he should have gotten like actual permission from Connie instead right. of Lucy saying, Well, Connie told me. I, I only think that she he would have violated HIPAA if he had asked her if she had been vaccinated. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're violating, violating my HIPAA. My HIPAA. So ultimately what we get to here is that yes, the, the doctor says, Well, 
Other people have been coming in reporting other rashes. People. It may or <laughs> may not. What? I said other people. And nah, cut that. Other people. I can't. <laughs> Other people. Other people. I, I'm actually fine if we change it to other people. Let's, I'm getting we... deeply uncomfortable with us continuously singing that song. Uncomfortable people. AJ yeah. <laughs> <AJ> Ditty. <laughs> anyway, um, the, do- Elf. the doctor. <laughs> Joshua Borman. <laughs> the- Joshua. 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 So the um. The do- <laughs> That's staying. It's all staying. Um, no, 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 no. I know. I've got this. I've got this. No, no, no. no but it's, Dr. Br- it's Dr. Bloomberg. It's Dr. Bloomberg. Michael Bloomberg says, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Bronner. <laughs> all right. I will contact that patient because I don't know for sure if this rash situation has to do with the shampoo or not. Yeah. But I'll get a hold of that patient. A whole rash of rashes. She will mm. get in touch with you if she is amenable to an interview. And so then after this, Lucy heads over to the actual company, this Calvin... Yes, by herself. Yes. Yeah. Connellsville is 30 miles away from yeah. Odyssey. She's taking the bus, too. She takes a bus mm-hmm. by herself at the age of 11. And uh, Can I just say that her going to that place immediately after visiting the doctor is very sus to me because his name is Dr. Bloomberg and the name of the company is... Calvin, Calvin Bloom. Bloom. Calvin Bloom. Yeah. Mm. So, of course, he has a fucking stake in the company. Mm. 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 Oh, yeah. Not to mention that he was formerly mayor of New York City and owns billions of dollars worth of shares in Bloomberg Financial. <laughs> yeah. And he's just giving physicals to small children. Incredible. Um, anyway, um, and Bette Midler can't wait to vote for him. Yeah, right. Hey, this is a preview of a premium episode. If you want to hear the entire thing, head on over to patreon.com slash worst of all and give us money. So that way people will like you more. You'll be famous. You'll be less rich than you were, but you'll be rich in good deeds and everyone will love you forever. I will. I, I'll even say your name with my voice. If you give five dollars, it'll sound just like this. And if you give ten dollars, it'll sound just like this. That's right. You know you want it. Anyway, do that. I'm gonna go to bed. 